Oh, here we have 13.3, which is um, squaring and multiplying two by two matrices. So one thing, um, they do talk about two by two matrices because they are very small, but yet also fit all the criteria to multiply matrices. And on top of that, they, um, because there's so little uh, elements, okay? But one thing that you are gonna have to know when you do end up multiplying any kind of matrix, matrices together is how you can tell whether or not they do in fact multiply or if it's, um, they cannot be multiplied, okay? So in order for us to do that, what has to happen is you have to write the dimensions of the first matrix, which we know in this case is two rows by two columns, so a two by two, right? And it's all rows by the columns. Then next to that, you're going to write the, the dimensions for matrix B. So again, two rows and then two columns. So it's also a two by two. In order for the product to exist, so in order for you to be able to take the product, these two have to match. If those two do not match, the first matrices columns and the second matrices rows, if these do not match, you cannot do the multiplication, okay? So these have to match. Not only that, you know, you take the middle guys into consideration to figure out whether or not they can multiply, but it's the... the rows of the first matrix and the columns of the second matrix, the outside matrix here in the dimensions, that actually tell you what your result is going to look like. So in this case, my result is going to be a two by two matrix, which you can see it there, okay? Now this is where it gets interesting when you're talking about multiplication. So <clears throat> what they're going to do here is they're going to take matrix A, which is two, zero, one, negative one, and they're gonna multiply it by matrix B, which is this. And here's the process that you go. You take the first matrix row by row by column, kind of like the way you described the um, dimensions, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Now what you do, is you take the first row times the second column. So notice how where the fingers are. I have my pointer finger, and these are the worst two fingers to use because they're not the same um, length. So let me grab some pins so you can see that here. So if I grab these two, I'm gonna try to do this properly. So if I grab these two, right? And it's best if I use my fingers because what I do is I face my hand downward toward the paper, right? And notice that my index finger is on the number two and my pointer finger, I'm trying to bend it so it's the same, um, length as my pointer finger, it's at the one, okay? So index is at the two, um, middle finger is at the one. And then when I rotate it, I rotate it so that my hand is now facing upward, okay? And so notice that when I put it next to this column here, my index is now on the number negative two, and my middle finger is at the number three, okay? Which means the index and finger numbers will get multiplied together, and then the middle finger numbers will get multiplied together, okay? So that's how this is working. Then if you want to get the, the that, because I needed somebody for the first row in the first column. So I multiplied this guy's first row times this guy's first column. But if I want to get what goes here, I would have to take what's in the first row and what's in the second column in order to get this element. So again, I'm gonna take that first row and multiply it by this second column. So here goes the rotation again. Two and one multiplied by negative three and zero, respectively. So two times the negative three, one times the zero. And what you do is you add those results together. So here I would have negative four plus three plus negative one. Here I would have negative six plus zero, which is negative six. Now for the bottom. So now I'm in the second row. So I should be working with the second row in the first matrix. If I want to get what's in the first column, I have to take that second row and multiply it by what's in the first column. 
So the 0 times the negative 2 and the negative 1 times the 3. Then if I want what's in the second row, second column, this entry, I will have to take what's in the second row times what's in the second column. So I get 0 times negative 3 and negative 1 times 0. When I multiply and add all this all together, following my order of operations, I end up with negative 3. When I multiply these and add the results together, I end up with 0. Okay. Now, matrix um, multiplication is not commutative. Okay. That means if you switch the order of the matrices that you're multiplying together, you will not. It, it can happen. It's not that it'll never happen. Sometimes by coincidence it does happen. It's the same. But normally, when you switch the order of the matrices, you don't get the same result. And you can notice here that in the end, I did not get the same result. Okay. But there's some special situations where you will get the same result, um, but typically you do not. So let's go ahead and um, multiply these together. So again, first row times first column. So negative 2 times 2, negative 3 times 0. First row times second column. So negative 2 times 1, negative 3 times negative 1. Second row times first column. 3 times 2, 0 times 0. Second row, second column. 3 times 1, 0 times negative 1. Okay. And when I do the multiplication and then take the sum, I get a negative 4. When I do these multiplications and I take the sum, I have negative 2 plus positive 3, which is 1. 6 plus 0, which is 6. 1 plus 0. I'm sorry. 3 plus 0 is 3. Now, if you want to square a matrix, it just means to take that matrix times itself. So I've written the V matrix twice. And then you're doing the same process. So first row, first column gives me negative 2, negative 2, negative 3, 3. First row, second column, negative 2 times negative 3, negative 3 times 0. Second row, first column, you get these guys. Second row, second column, you get these terms. Then you take your products and then combine the like terms and you end up with all the elements in the squared function. Okay? So that's pretty much the process. I like to use my fingers. I was going to try to use the pins, but it's a little bit harder to see the, how the rotation is going because instead of just going like this, that's wrong, right? You have to rotate around like that. And with the pins, it's harder to tell. But with my hands, it's easier because you can see that my hands are face up here, like uh, or face down. My palm is face down here. And when I rotate, my palm has to be facing up. Okay? So you can see the rotation a little bit better when you're using your hands versus when I'm using my pins. Um, it's not doing this. So you're not taking this and then rotating it that way. Because notice that the index finger and the pointer finger are not in the right places when I rotate it like that. So it's not rotating like this. It's rotating and your hand has to flip over. Okay? So your hand has to 